Good evening. Deacon did an excellent job reading the gospel tonight. He came to me before Mass. He said, there is a really long one here tonight, Father. But he did great. And he did great for us to recognize all of the connections that are not just present for us tonight, but are present throughout the scripture. Our four our ears, our four our lives, and our growth in our faith, and how to act as a son or daughter of God, and how beautiful it is that all of these draw the connections between themselves. I think it would make a really good quiz to ask you all on Sunday and to watch all of you pass because all of you know scripture so well, right? He, he, he shook his head, yes. Okay, ready? It was you. And then, she, and then he threw his wife under the bus. We have the first reading today. How wonderful it is to see that expression of God recognizing what is happening in reality. He doesn't just turn a blind eye. There was a reason he sent his son. There was a reason his son wanted to go himself. There's a reason why the Holy Spirit is with them. Because when love is shared between two, it is really nothing. But love to be shared between three is a complete gift of self, received, bearing fruit, meant to be also for another. As they are encouraged, instructed, told to make gifts for God the Father, told to be ready, they are preparing themselves to give completely of themselves. But the quiz, where else do we see this kind of love? Not one son was called to be the next king. Is there anyone else? David, this young, ruddy, care of the sheep, the shepherd of the family, has not yet returned for the evening. The one who is chosen by God, whom is known in a personal way, and told as he volunteers himself to go out and to kill Goliath, to take the sword of the king to take all of the uniform, the protection, but knowing this is not of God and God's plan to keep safe his brothers and sisters. He takes his slingshot, he takes his shiny stones, he takes his satchel bag and his cloak. The quiz in the Bible, is he the only one he is the only one prepared to go. But there are others just like him who are trained to use maybe one slingshot or one in each hand and to be able to go between them and to protect the sheep, the innocent, the most given as a sacrifice. This will be enough. How does he prepare? If a lamb is taken by a lion or a bear and in its mouth runs off, what does David do? He chases him down and kills the bear or the lion and then recovers the sheep of his house, of his work, and returns. He's made for the protection. He is made for the particular Christian life that God has for him. It's awesome. They should make a movie. They did. It's called Troy. He is the protector. He is the strong, the ruddy one. 
and he is ready. But are they ready? Are they ready to admit that it is written within us to be generous and to protect the least? Is it written within us and with the strength and the necessary food we need for the mission that he has prepared for us? Would you go out for just one? Yes. Would you protect the other 99 as a work for your brother? Yes. As he goes out and filled with great joy, David puts the one on his shoulders and goes back and throws this great party. This is God's. And this is his sacrifice for God. And God celebrates this one who does his work, his missionary. Are we ready to live the faith? even if it means something crazy or ridiculous. One of the connections I made in praying through this gospel is also Abraham, though. Abraham's brother Lot goes out to save people. God has given him this mission. Go to Sodom and Gomorrah with your wife, your daughters, with their, with their fiancés preparing to be married, preparing to have a feast, preparing to invite all the neighbors when the chosen don't come. Everyone is invited. Have we heard that recently? Yes. And if we are not prepared ourselves then to be cast out into the darkness, is this something the Lord would really do? Yes, because he knows and loves us, and he knows that he sent his son for our salvation, not for us to just play the game that we want, but to come to know him in our personal relationship, to have a family, to have a community. How awesome is Abraham? What if there's 10 just people? He, of course, names more. 50 just people, 30 just people, 20 just people. Would you really do this, Lord? What if there's only five? And the Lord shows his love for us. Go. The ridiculousness. <laughs> Are you sure? That's really far away. Can we go to a shorter place? Go, he says. Fine, just go. Because your going may enlighten them to the God that is giving you your direction. Do we all do it perfectly without God's direction? Do we just know exactly what to do in every single moment of the day? Or do we commit sins? Do we choose the wrong thing? Or even the littlest, the smallest gifts worth working to honor the Lord and give thanks? One coin. Bishop Barron calls it just a penny. Something so small, just nominal really. But it's his for us. It's the sustenance we need to do his will, to grow, to save. Does that passage remind you of the three that are sent with the rich man's money as he departs? Bring this back to me. Show me what you have done. Would you use your intelligence as his son? Would you recognize how much he knows you already? Go, save, trade, return with double. At the very least, just bury it. But wait, what would that good? What would that good be? What would that fruitfulness be? He takes it. 
He gives it to those who have proven themselves. The Lord does not look on you as some meaningless son or daughter who's incapable of doing his will, but he knows exactly what he's asking of you, and he will not ask of you something that you do not have the strength, the intelligence, the ability, the family, the means to complete. As the Lord has come, Jesus wanted to come to know us, the one who knew no sin, but comes to see the sin and how difficult it can be, and to reassure us that we are forgiven, that we are the sons and daughters of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and that we not just receive his love, but give it back in its fullness as a gift, returning what was given to us, throwing a party out of thankfulness for all that he's done for us. That third parable, the parable of the gospel, the gospel of Luke, the long gospel, in this 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We hear about the prodigal son. Perhaps if you've done any sort of Bible study or any sort of study with your Christian brothers and sisters, you'll have this lively debate. Are you the younger one or the older one? Are you the father? Are you the rich man? Are you the demanding one who would actually take half his wealth before it's his? the audacity. Father, give me what's mine. His brother knows him. His brother knows what he has already done, the sins he has committed. But his brother doesn't follow him or stay with him. His brother works. His brother thinks that he is now deserving of far more than even just half what is his, what he has a claim to. But his father throws the party. After constantly being ready for him, looking out, waiting to see him from afar, and it doesn't say that he will get the food every day or that there will be a perpetual party. He may get just what the rest of the servants get tomorrow. But for today, for the one who shows up late, for the one who's already been paid everything that he would ever be owed for whatever work that he would step forward to do, because he knows his father and he loves him, He's already paid. Don't give him any more. He doesn't deserve it. But that is his son. Jesus cries out to his father in his last moments at three o'clock. The temple is split in two. God is revealing that this was always his plan. Are you deserving of eternal life? Are you doing the works of the Christian life that God is calling us to do? Have you given him five, ten minutes just sitting in here, gazing upon the cross? Did you read this long and difficult gospel before you came tonight? The Lord loves you. He loves you with an unquenchable love. He can't wait to be with you, to forgive you, to stand with you, to have a new moment, to walk to the Father. to be together.
Stand with him. Recognize the humility he offers to you. It, it's been weeks, months, years, Lord, since my last confession, but these are my sins. The humility it takes to say, I am a sinner, not worthy of your mercy. But you are the one who determines who is worthy. And you sit waiting, looking out for me coming from afar to say, I am sorry. And I am ready to live with you. I am ready to grow as your son. I am ready to do your good work as you would only ask for what you know you will be with me to complete. Let him prepare us. Read the gospel. Make the connections. Study as, it, as if it is your favorite book and you know every single story. Because you can. And your mind will be happier than it ever has been to see all that the Lord gives to you in his divinely inspired word.